getting a lot of backlash from having your little ring on your pinky finger. Cheaty muck cheater. So. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's not very obvious that you're married, is it? <laughs> My God. I know Catty with you. Okay? Yeah, we had Catty today. <laughs> she had some frosties for breakfast. <laughs> what on earth is wrong with you? Why don't you cut the flowers? <laughs> Remember that, Jamie? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Did you say that? We yeah. haven't cut the flowers, have we? The male giraffe pulled out before he came, and it turns out giraffes ejaculate at speed, at high speed, as the cum flew straight at my friend's head and knocked her out. <laughs> <sighs> That's how I feel. You're so grumpy, and you look like Boris Johnson right now with your hair. It could have been more flat on your face. And she's giving me more like boys only, you know, when you used to pull it all down on the face. What do you mean? My hair? Like Danny from Muckfly. Or Muck what was Fly the fit again. one called? You the know, Blondie. It, his, by the way, we, this was in our live show. It's not Muckfly. It is Muck, Muck, Muck. Same thing. <laughs> no, it's not. It's totally different things. How do you say my name, bitch? Habu. It's Habu. Yeah, but that's not the same as Muck. Well, Muck, yeah, it is, McDonald's. So you go and watch Muck fly? Yeah, I went to see them twice. Okay, where do you go and get a Happy Meal? McDonald's. Yes, exactly. So what is the other one? Muck, Muck fly. You don't go, no, no, no. Oh, you... I said it right then. Oh, and everyone's bored of it. We all know I can't speak English. <laughs> no one's bored of it. What no one is bored of is oh, your oh, hair. It gets I... better and it's the gift that keeps on giving that, those blonde locks of yours. I'm stressed, all right? I'm stressed. You're so stressed, guys. Yes. It's, it's, I've had it up to here with your nonsense. There's no nonsense. It's like I married a troll. Also, getting a lot of backlash from having your little ring on your pinky finger. Cheaty muck cheater. So. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's not very obvious that you're married, is it? I, I think it is. We've done a podcast for a year. I think people know we're married. Not if you went to, like, Asia. <laughs> when am I going to go to Asia? Don't know. Maybe. Wait, so you think the fact that I have my it's wedding... It's not very obvious. It is obvious. Why did you do it? You're not a royal. No, because, honey, that's what the tradition is, actually, to have it underneath your signet ring. Says who? Prince William? No, that is the tradition. Don't see any other husbands having it under their little finger. Yeah, loads of them do. No, they don't. The ones that cheat do. Sorry, hang on a second. Hang on a second. You think the reason that I put my wedding thing... My wedding I can't see it. It's so small. It just is not very obvious. I think we need to mixy matchy and our, move it over. Our lovely um, person who made them for us, Del, he wears it underneath his signet ring. But Del is like a secure, secure guy. You can't see him going out and flashing his ring around. <laughs> I'm joking. It's fine. But you are getting a lot of backlash from From it. who? When am I getting... From all of our fans. <laughs> what is going Not on? Not our fans, I mean our listeners. What is going on? So who's saying that to you? All of my friends who DM me. They, who they, listen to the podcast. They say what? They say Jamie needs to get a ring on his ring finger, not on his little finger. No, that's what... Uh, people wear it underneath their signet ring. Says who? Honestly, my dad did not. Does your dad wear a wedding ring? He's divorced, so no. Okay, my brother doesn't wear a wedding ring. Alexander Leng wears a wedding ring. No, he doesn't. Why not? Because he has a signet ring that he wears. So if you have a signet ring, you're too posh to wear a wedding ring? No, it's not, about, it's not about being too posh. What, so you look too bling if you have two you, rings You on. have a lot of gold on your fingers and typically some men don't like that. Well, you wear nice watches, so then don't wear that. No, but it's not... No, it's, the whole point is it's got gold on your fingers. Get a silver one. <laughs> okay, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, but then you have a lot of rings. I you, wear my you've wedding... You've got rings on your other finger. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell everyone. Guys, if anyone sees me in a bar, in a restaurant, in a club... I don't go to those things without you. I'm married, okay? So anyone who is thinking about flirting... I'm just feeding back what, what the listeners want. No, no listener wants that. Do you want... Do, honey, would you like me to I change? really don't care. I actually think it looks quite nice. I so, didn't actually notice it, to be fair. So you don't mind it? I don't notice it. I don't mind it. I'm just giving you the feedback. You're not helping me with my stressness, right? You're just adding to my stress. I, I told you to get a massage. I told you to have a, have a bath. You won't let me do anything. It's all you. Control freak. You, he, he, <laughs> you're stressed because you won't give me any jobs to do. <laughs> and we've ticked off all the boxes. No, we haven't. Yes, we have. We've done the seating plan. Tick. <laughs> we haven't completed the seating plan. In my eyes, we have every seat is full. <laughs> it's not. They are. It's not so. You didn't, Jamie didn't even have a sat next to each other. Yes. He had like my mum in between. I was like, that's not what happened. No, we didn't have that. Yes, you did. <laughs> no, did. Jamie honestly had like the most rogue people opposite me. I was like, sorry to those rogue people. Maybe we should cut that out because there's no one rogue coming. We love everyone coming. But I don't think you knew the like concept of a top table. I know the concept of a top table. It, I don't think you did. You oh. like had my mum on like literally next to you 
somebody random at the back left. We're going to get into this, okay? So because this is actually one of the most stressed I think I've been in a while. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty stressed. I couldn't tell. Sorry, listen, hang on a second. I'm not. You're meant to support. We're married now. You're meant to support me, not... I'm not... helping you. No, you're obviously not. You're saying, look, you're cool as a peanut right now. And I'm stressed as a little maggot. That was a really nice analogy. Okay, so you gotta, you got to help me, sister. Sister, I did it all yesterday. I did the whole table plan. I Baby, you forgot someone off the table. One person! <laughs> Get a grip! Yeah, but then I had to go through the whole table plan and change everyone. Because you were dyslexic and you didn't spell anyone's names. He literally had everyone's... And you just put people, so-and-so's boyfriend. I was like, you need to put their name. They can't just go to the, the table and be like... <laughs> Alex's boyfriend like that's rude you can't do that I can't spell I know you really can't spell it's Just, really hard I know oh is that all of our chat today then no it's not signing off bye shall we begin the episode yes hello everyone welcome back to Nilly Weds podcast hello everyone welcome back to Nilly Weds podcast I'm Sophie Lang yeah is your point I'm Jamie Lang. How are you? Guys, um, today is going to be a bit of a, a stressful episode, I Oh, think. you say this every time. There's no, no stress. I'm stressed. There's lots of things been going on that are stressful. My toothaches. Your tooth is cracked at the back <laughs> and you won't shut the fuck up about it. Go to the dentist. It has a crack in your molar. Get it ripped out. I can't rip out my tooth. You're so stressed because I'm suffering deeply from hay fever and he's so cross about it, yet he won't let me get the steroid jab. I'm, I'm going to give uh, an example of Sophie at night at the moment when we're lying in bed. So firstly, Sophie gets into bed before me. I then Because I, I, I'm doing the seating plan or something. You... I don't get into bed before you. I go to bed at nine. You act like I'm like a child who sleeps at 6pm. Like I go to bed at a normal, nice time. Okay. I then I then go upstairs. We get upstairs. I go to bed as well. And we lie there. So has terrible hay fever at the moment. You have really, really bad hay fever. Um, and, that you know, you, la you, you take an injection sometimes to make it better. Last year I had the steroid injection. You had yeah. the steroid injection. Anyway, this year you haven't done it because I just think it's a bad thing to do. So I don't think you should do it. Anyway, so at night what happens is like, because you lie on your back, you know this. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> what? I don't lie on my back. I lie <laughs> sideways. Honey, I promise you, you lie on your back. You lie on your back and you're and yeah, and it's it, the snoring is so loud, but it's okay. Well, it's not okay because you wake me up at 6 a.m. when you wake up at crack of dawn and go, you're snoring last night. I'm like, well, go to another room. I got you earplugs. Oh my God. I know, Catty McGee. Okay? Yeah, yeah, Catty today. <laughs> Sorry, lass. <laughs> Why are you so Catty today? What's happening? I don't know. Got a little feist in my <laughs> step. She had some Frosties for breakfast. <laughs> and I had a coconut water, which is cherry on top of the cake. Sophie, honestly, the only thing that Sophie's been drinking and eating, anything, is just... Not eating. No, not eating, <laughs> but... Coconut waters. Coconut yeah. waters. Honestly, the, the co pink ones. The, these pink coconut waters arrive at our house. I reckon two times a day they arrive at our house. I asked Sophie how much each thing of coconut water costs. Now, listen, I, I'm no geography expert, but I don't think coconuts grow in this country. I found out that each coconut thing is six pounds. Seven pound ninety. <gasps> yeah, but listen up. Listen up. I think that people do different things. How many things. do you drink a day? Be honest. A lot because I'm dehydrated. <laughs> drink. Someone told me water. they give your skin. Honey, drink. I don't like water. I'm really bored of it. I, you know, it's squash or coconut <laughs> juice for me. I need the sweetness in my life. <laughs> I think my teeth I'm might rot. Really bored no, of it. No, don't show me how much I'm spending. How much is she spending, Jay? That's a year. But you're only spending £6,000 a oh, year I on coconut water. I a week, so I was a bit more upset. <laughs> You thought it was £6,000 a week on coconut water. Yeah, but if you think about it, that could be my facials. I've not been having them recently. I've really cut down on them. Oh, I, do you know what? I'm proud of you, honey. Yeah, I know, Getting married's fun as well. It feels it feels fun. What feels fun is it's also summer now. So like I'm just, I'm a summer girl through and through. So I'm just feeling fresh and feeling great. And we feel like a team. We feel like a team. Such a team. Although you don't let me do things. Sorry. Can, 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 well, listen, this is a great space. Tell me what you want. What do I do? Am I a bit, am I a bit overpowering when I do stuff? 
no, you just like, you'll give me, you'll be like, if we haven't done this, I'm doing it all on my own. I'll be like, let me do it. And you'll be like, right, we'll call Fred to help you do it. I'm like, I'm not a reprobate. Like I can <laughs> fucking spell people's names. I know who's going to our wedding. I can type Emily Champion on the seating plan very easily. You're like, just call Fred so she can spell it out for you. I'm like, Fred is my assistant. <laughs> I'm like, no. Well, we had a big thing happened this week. This is why I'm also stressed. Turns out, Sophie and I had booked two different photographers. We had... Yeah. <laughs> I had booked one that I thought you wanted, and you had booked another person. Yeah. That you thought... And so now... We're paying for two. <laughs> we're paying for two photographers. Yeah. That was me. I'll take that one. I'll take that on the chin. Yeah, honey, you do take that one on the chin. I took it on the chin. I... Yeah. That was your fault. I I know the look I want and you just didn't get the right one for me. So you got the right one for you, but I'm the one wearing Can the I, I'm going to tell you what happened. So this is what happened. So we all, Sophie and I, we were going through the process of getting married and organised different things. And Sophie said, okay, you organise the photographer. No, we all know I went mental. I literally lost my marbles. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't, the anxiety was so rife. I didn't want to know anything. I didn't even know what food, you could have fed me pasta with... A chicken on top of it. I don't know if that's Sounds a meal. Delicious. Right, delicious. you could have given me yeah, tripe, go. and I would have been like, whatever. I didn't want. To, I didn't even want to go to the wedding. Well, that's how. Yeah, you didn't. That's how anxious you yeah. were. Yeah. So you book whatever photographer you want, and then you booked one. No, what happened was, is I said, okay, I'm going to book a photographer. So I booked this amazing photographer. Anyway, then. What happened was, is that Sophie, I'm I'm with my mum. I'm having a little golf day, hanging out. I get a call from Sophie. So I pick up the phone. I'm like, hi. So he goes, okay, I have booked another, I booked a photographer. And I said, what do you mean you've booked a photographer? I have a photographer already organized. And you said, oh, wait, I've been in contact with another photographer for the last two weeks and I have paid the money and booked it. And I said, yeah. well, I've booked my photographer. So then we had to let one of the photographers down three weeks before our wedding and I pay know. in full. I know. So but are we having them both now? What's the situation? I don't know, honey. We'll, we'll work that out today. <laughs> okay, let's work it out now. Go. We can have them both. Okay, that's that's what you want? Well, yeah, I don't know. No, maybe not. The other one can have a holiday. <laughs> I don't want to know. It's honestly the most hectic thing in the entire yeah, world. Yeah, but at least we've got a photographer. We're on our way. We've got the seating plan. We're, we're signed, sealed, delivered, honey. We haven't done the seating plan. Oh! S Sophie, it's not done. I've seen it seven times. My eyes are going blue because of it. <laughs> we had someone... We had someone... <laughs> my eyes are going blue because of it. What on earth is wrong with you? I'm seeing squares. What's the saying when you look at a TV for so long? Sophie, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Sophie, it's honestly the most stressful thing in the world. Can you not, Sophie, anyone listening to this right now, it's going to be like, this sounds hectic. You're hectic. You're, you need to take a breather. I'm going to Spain on Saturday. I need to pack my bags. Getting my little grooves off my teeth today were on the Invisalign, which I've not worn for a day that I've had it done. So my teeth probably haven't moved a little drop. <laughs> They're going to try and put them in today. I'm going to be like, have you been wearing these? Every time I go in, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just did a podcast. So I had to take them out. No, no never You wear them. them at night because every single morning I wake up to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you <laughs> and then you go. Where are my retainers? And they're just on the ground. <laughs> no, that's so gross. You make me out to be like the some fun, hot. The fun, the what? What? No, I don't like it when you get like this. It really worries me. You look like you're going to blow up. The funniest was when you had your retainers and you would drink coffee and then put your retainers back in your mouth. No, it was a turmeric then... latte. <laughs> 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 and they were yellow orange she, Sophie would have her retainers she would take them out drink her turmeric cappuccino whatever it is put her retainers back in for the whole day and her teeth would be stained yellow yeah it will be I can't wait for this wedding with my orange stained teeth <laughs> uh, oh my god I just want to I want to say this to everyone <laughs> I want to say this. What's going on today? So it's a stressful day. We got literally three... Don't talk to me about that because I need to seriously get back on that reform at Pilates. You look great, honey. We're three weeks until our wedding. It's really heating up. And anyone who... Heating up? It's heating up. Oh, yeah. And for anyone who is getting married or has been married or 
is has listened to this podcast, everyone knows the stress that we've had <clears throat> leading up to it. Anyone knows who gets married, how stressful it gets towards the actual moment. Because there's a lot going on. You want all your guests to be happy. You want us to be happy. You want everything to run smoothly. You want everything to be okay. It's, a, it's just a really stressful moment. Well, just take a breather and go with the flow, sister. Take a leaf out of my book. There's a leaf behind you. <laughs> I'm not sleeping that well. You're sleeping so well. It's not my fault you wake up at 6 a.m. to go train with Sean, the PT. This is a huge day because we have, we just have, we have two important guests coming Pinnacle up. Pinnacle gas. Pinnacle, honey. I mean, do we say now? I think we do. Okay, we have our cake maker. Yum, diddly yum. <laughs> yum, diddly in my tum. She's a coming on. <laughs> no, I really, really, you're scaring me sometimes. Okay, well, she's coming And we've on. got second up guest. And second up guest. We've got guest number two. <laughs> guest number two is... Lucia, our wedding planner. Our wedding planner. Our wedding planner who has done Doubt With Us for how long? A year? Doubt longer. With Us for about eight months now. No, longer, longer, longer. Maybe a year. No, eight months to a year. Yeah, maybe a year. She is flown all the way over from Spain, from Mabea. Why? I tried to do the accent, it didn't work. She's flown all the way over from Mabea. She's flying all the way back up over to Mabea tonight because she's still got to plan our wedding and all of the other weddings she's doing. And all the other ones. And she's coming over, especially for us. So we have that on as a guest day. So this is a huge episode, guys. You got, hey, if you've got a seatbelt, buckle in because this is going to be a big one. Baby, listen, I tell you what we've got to go into. You ready for this? Let's go into it. Oh, what are we going into, baby? Come on. Let's just rest it. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for all of your listeners' messages. We adore them. We have a message about a stag prank. Are you ready this? Oh my God, I'm so ready. Here we go. We have a message from Joe. Hi, Jamie and Sophie. Now that you've both safely returned from your stag and hen do's, I want to let you know a prank that happened to my brother-in-law. A few weeks before his wedding, his friends took him to Edinburgh for his stag. Amongst the stags were two friends who were training in orthopedics. On the last morning after a big night out, my bro-in-law woke up to find his leg in plaster. He panicked and called his best man who came into the hotel room and broke the news to him that he had tripped outside the club. He'd had to go to A&E and the x-ray showed a fracture in his lower leg and he would have to be in plaster for the next six <gasps> weeks. My brother-in-law was gutted. He'd been pretty drunk, but how could he have let this happen? Anyway, fast forward to the very end of the wedding day, when just in time for the first dance, the stags revealed that his leg was totally fine and the plaster had been on by his mates when he passed out Shut in up. the hotel how long? bathroom. For how long? Six weeks. No, no, I would. you'll be done. You'll be... He was in a cast for six No, that's actually brutal. He was in a cast for six weeks. That's actually cruel. You would not be my friend. I would not be happy with that. That is horrific. That's like taking a joke. And that is, that's actually bullying. That's really intense. I got told the best prank the other day. The best prank in the world. I think is so good. A good friend, comedian, Tom Lucy told me. He said, what you do is a prank. What you do is a prank. When you sell a house, when you sell a house, you go into your bedroom and you write on the wall, you write on the wall, I will kill again. And you cover it up wallpaper that you know that the new tenants are going to take down. <laughs> so when they come in and take it down, behind his written, yes. I would kill it again. Tom, what's going through your mind? You guys... Imagine if you came into a new house. I'd be like, God, you would scared. I should sell it straight away. Jamie, like, honestly sees, like, if we go looking around a house, if, like, the owner sneezes, he's like, I think that hell we can't buy here. I'm like, they fucking sneeze. Sorry, they sneeze. I did. I'm swearing. I did. I did because I had that really scary moment in the house once. I told you that now I get really freaked out. He saw dead bodies hanging from a <laughs> noose. <laughs> I know, it was really scary. That, you can't just shout that out there. Like I, I saw, I went into a flat. It was the most amazing flat in the entire world. And my flatmate at the time was like, oh my God, we should 100% rent this. And I was like, oh, it feels so good, but there's a weird feeling. And I turned around and I saw the image of these dead bodies. And I was like, oh my God, what I think that's a little bit too much of the old drinky drinky. The <laughs> there's before. no drinky drinky. Uh, Sophie Ooh. and I, last summer went looking at a house we absolutely loved it Sophie loved it more than anything we have to get it we have to get it and I then suddenly went upstairs and looked at, looked at the attic bit and I said oh it gives me anxiety can't get it he, he was like I feel really anxious in this room kept making me sit in it he was like have you got the anxiety I was like nope still feel fine he was like but I feel it just sit in it five more minutes I was like still feel fine didn't get the house what? yeah 
Honestly, sometimes you walk into a restaurant, James, like, <gasps> I feel sketchy, do you? He's like, oh my God, imagine if all the people in this room are actors. I'm like, you are so mental. <laughs> I can't. And then I look around and see all these people eating and I'm like, are we in a, am I in a trip? What's going right. So terrifying to walk into a restaurant and think everyone's actors in there. It's terrifying. Imagine if I wasn't real. No. <laughs> don't, that's his biggest bit. Don't that's do all that. a dream. It's all a trip. No, don't do that. It's all mental in his mind and I'm not real. <sighs> Thank this God. So that would be a nightmare. <laughs> We've got another one from Mandy Gardner. Okay. Best story. My friend works in a &E near a local wildlife park. Someone came in with a concussion one time. They'd been at a wildlife park and were visiting the gi giraffe enclosure and two giraffes were having sex. The male giraffe pulled out before he came and it turns out giraffes ejaculated at high speed as the cum flew straight at my friend's head and knocked her out. With her Shut You're fucking joking. There is no way. <laughs> Look up how quickly a giraffe comes. There is no way a giraffe, giraffe ejaculated and it knocked out someone. Directly in her. Also, like, did it spin round and just go to her? Whoa! That would be like your shot. That is Awful. There is no way. Yeah, I reckon that's true. I God. tried to look up the speed, but I just got really bad images. So I just... Oh, no. There is no ways. I reckon a, a giraffe ejaculates. I picture them ejaculating quite slowly. They're quite long and slow. But currently not. Currently. Currently not. Currently not. We have a voice note from Claire. And it's a very, very strange wedding. Here it is. So I've just been on my way home from work and I was listening to the podcast. And then I had a violent flashback to this wedding that I went to a few years back. <laughs> now, I do think it has scarred me for life. Um, and this is why. So I went to the reception and I walk in and I'm looking around the room and I'm thinking, hmm, surely not. <laughs> surely not. So the happy couple... They've got all these pictures up around the room of themselves blown up on these massive canvas things and they are naked. <laughs> naked in the shower, looking at each other all seductively and this is plastered around their wedding reception. And I just thought, what a fucking rogue choice that is. <laughs> like, why on earth would you want to have that in your wedding for everyone to see? Still, to this day, I think the funniest voice note listener's message we got with the voice note which was back at pretty much at the beginning they she was an artist and she was talking about her friend who got invited to the wedding and she was showed her butt you no said not showed her butt no she was like a stranger to the wedding like didn't really know anyone and they were all standing like greeting the bride and the groom <laughs> and she, she didn't know what to do so she kissed the bride on the lips <laughs> she didn't know what to do since you were... <laughs> I want such a wedding. It's actually one of your friends. Oh, yeah. And I thought another pair... <laughs> you introduced me. You, you thought what? I actually never told you this. You introduced me to this... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were saying I had a bit of a bit. It's not going on. Okay, go, tell me. <laughs> Yeah. You introduced me to this person. I actually can't. It's just come back to me. Oh my God. Oh my God. You introduced yeah. okay, me. Can you tell me? I went. I, she's the most beautiful bride. She's made me feel so fuck. It wasn't the bride's mom. It can't, I can't, it's not funny. <laughs> it's so good. When well, you went up to someone. <laughs> you were, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, this is my girlfriend. And she was like, so nice to meet you. I went, oh my God, you must be so proud. She's the most beautiful bride. And she went along with it. She was like, and now I know them so well. Can I just tell you? It was Zoe Tally's mom. <laughs> you said to Tally. About Molly. I thought it was Molly. Anyway, not funny. I just really visioned it. And you were also just so drunk. You were like, what are you talking about? You missed mistook the bride's mum. That was a bad story, but it really touched me. <laughs> you mistook the bride's mum. But she mom. went along with it. That was the funniest thing. You can picture her face being like, oh, <sighs> thanks. God, I've had so many awkward moments. <laughs> <laughs> I did this the other day. 
<laughs> it's not that funny, but I did this the other day. So I was in uh, Whaley and BBC, and oh, yeah, and one of one of the presenters was walking past, um, who I know quite. Well. He's a very big presenter, and he turned and looked at me, which I thought he looked at me right. And I was sitting with a few people, and so I put my arm up in the air to wave at him, and he totally ignored it because I don't think he saw me. So I just went. Whew! <laughs> my arm into a plane and went you didn't that's so fucking weird everyone was like what the hell oh god it's too good oh god we're really losing the plot aren't we woo Uh, next one up oh this is a big one we have a sweet proposal story from Laura I wanted to share my proposal story I entered the London Marathon in 2022 and ran for the pancreatic cancer charity. My dad passed away in 2016 after being diagnosed three months earlier, and it had always been a goal of mine to run the charity for him. One day, I received a call saying I got a place in the marathon. I ran downstairs to tell my boyfriend, Ed, the exciting news. Later, when we were discussing it, I joked about him proposing at the finish line. He shot that idea down very fast. Fast forward to October 2022. I ran 26.2 miles in memory of my dad, and we all celebrated in the pub afterwards. Once we got home, I ran upstairs to see our cat, Lady Dennis, only to hear Ed behind me saying, Laura. I turn around and he's on one knee and asked me to marry him. He told me he had planned to ask at the finish line, but he couldn't get to it. Oh my God. Then at the pub, he wanted me to have my moment. But in the end, it was the most perfect proposal. Just me, Ed, and Lady Dennis. It made me so emotional. everywhere on my face. It makes me so emotional, these ones. Sweet Lady D. He wanted to get to finish. I couldn't do it. Oh my it's God. so hard when, when you're trying to find someone and you're running on the little marathon on the side. <laughs> when have you Once done? my sister ran the half marathon. Yeah. And, um... Because I'm so recognisable. I got in, inundated by people. Well done, saw you running the marathon. Because I was running to try and find you on the side. Sorry. Sorry, people thought you were running a marathon. Yeah, because I was in my gym kit as well. And I was trying to find where she was to get to the finish line. Yeah. But anyway, so Not I really quite the same. Sorry, that was really a lovely story. Yeah, I love that story. Laura, that is amazing. Congratulations to yeah, you and Ed. Also him. That is amazing. Congratulations, guys. That's amazing as well. And well done for running the marathon for such an amazing cause. I love these stories. And we have an amazing Propose the Pod. Okay, this is amazing. From Az and Charlotte, they're best friends. Uh, they were in an airport together and realized they both loved the podcast and listened to it the whole way home and then made a song about it. Propose the pod, 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 propose the pod. In the airport, the mighty airport, the wind delayed our flight. So we decided to listen to the nearly words all night. Propose the pod. Sorry. That is. As a Charlotte, winners, winners. Baby, sign them fucking up. Sign, sorry, I keep swearing. Sign them up. Sign them. Simon Cow, hello. Propose the pod, propose the pod. In the airport, the mighty airport. In the airport, the mighty airport. In the airport, the mighty airport. Oh my God, I've got such a bad voice. I'm so sorry. In the airport, the mighty airport. The the nearly went speak tonight. A jingle bell, a jingle bell. No. Jingle bell rock? What the hell? Jesus. So we have an amazing um, Propose the Pod today from Sophie Needs, who says, Today I was listening to your podcast on the way to dinner, followed by a comedy gig with friends. As the MC of the gig began, I could hear this chitter-chatter of noise, like someone was on a phone call, which sounded like it was coming from behind me. I wasn't the only one that noticed the noise during the pauses of silence and between the comedian's gags and crowd's laughter. To my shock and embarrassment, I quickly rifled through my bag, only to discover it was in fact me playing your podcast (gasps) during the gig. I quickly owned up. The comedian questioned what podcast I was listening to and was it any good? I proudly told the room of 50 strangers plus my husband and friends of your Nearly Weds podcast. And even if you are not getting married, it will give you a right laugh. The comedian echoed me further promoting the podcast and we all laughed. Unplanned, but brilliant. I love that. I wonder what comedian it was. I don't know. I'd love to know who it was. I don't know. Oh my God. Michael McIntyre. 
50 people in the room. I think you probably have a big room. Oh, okay, room. fine. All right. Guys, I want to say a big thank you to every single person. I know I said every single week, but I truly do. From the bottom of our hearts, we I mean it. I truly do too. I know we both mean it. It's just amazing. And to everyone who keeps writing in all of your stories, please, please keep sending them in because we... Um, we just they're a joy um, please send them into at nillyweds podcast on our Instagram or you can send us an email contact at nillyweds podcast dot com that's the end of listeners messages okay right sister are you hungry I am starving oh do you want to uh, lick some ass in? Uh, no. Stop. Okay. Well, do you do you want to? Uh... We got our cake person coming. On. Okay. It's going to be delicious. We have our, our cake maker. She's also flown in from Spain. I know. Sorry. Hello. What's going on? I know, it's amazing. We have the wonderful cat who is coming onto the podcast right now. I think she's bought a little bit of a surprise to us. We haven't chosen our cake yet, so we, we are don't know what about we were about to pick. The flavors, the tears, everything that's going on on our actual wedding cake. I cannot wait. Please. Welcome to the podcast, our amazing cake maker, Kat. Uh, Kat, welcome to the podcast. We're really excited because you have very, are very kindly making our cake for us. Absolutely, I can't wait. Oh, my, how <laughs> many cakes do you think you made for weddings so far in your life? Oof, a lot. Probably getting on around the 100 mark now, I'd wow. say. Wow. Yeah. And Kat, so your cake company is called... Cats Cakes Marbella. Amazing. And so you basically, for anyone in Marbella or the surrounding area, you can make cakes for all of them. So you're going to make our cake first. We haven't yes. decided exactly what we really want at Not the moment. Yet. So you said you have a sort of surprise for us, right? That we're going to do. do. Well, um, thank God they made it through passport control and airport <laughs> yeah. security. These 12 cupcakes that I've brought with me for you to try. Oh my God. And oh I my iced God. them yesterday because you can't bring butter into the UK. Stop. From yeah. Brexit. Yeah. It's the new cocaine. Do you, do you know <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've got six flavours for you to try, which delicious. are lemon, chocolate orange, chocolate, oh Oreo, God. red velvet. I can already tell you're going to go for the, the, the lemon one. I can tell what you will go for. You'll go for Oreo. Do you think so? Yeah, 100%. Okay, so should we try it? Do we yeah. have a little marker that we can We've try? We've got it? little scorecards down here. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you are. Okay, blind Bobby, here we go. Headphones. I'm going to let you try them all, Jamie, because I know which one I want. Can keep them on. Okay, I'm blindfolded. So how, how are you going to do this? I'm are you going to lick anything. the icing first and then dig into the cake? Oh, sister, you, you just do whatever you want, baby. <laughs> okay, well, okay, it's not sexual situation over here. Okay. Right, here we go. We're going to get you gonna, And I'm going to give the points as well. Yeah. And okay. don't feel you have to give all of them 10 out of 10. Uh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Say it. <laughs> oh, dig in, boy. Scrummy, scrummy, scrummy. That was just icing, I think. Yeah, well, there you go. All right, yeah. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Not too much. <laughs> oh, watch. <laughs> Watching this. He's back on the fresh bit. Sophie, to do it properly. Okay, well, I'm doing it properly. What do you want me to do? Four? Maybe use the knife and cut a little bit off. That's probably going to work, right? Cat, you're like, yeah. what am I doing here? <laughs> Go. Open wide. <laughs> Nothing happened. It was just my fingers. That's chocolate. Correct. Correct. I'm going to give that a, a, a an eight. Okay. I'm going to give that an eight. Perfect. Okay, okay. next one, Soph. <laughs> Come on, give it to us. Bravo. Lemon drizzle me up, baby. <laughs> No. <laughs> Red velvet me up, baby. <laughs> no, come on. Let the oh, oh. Chocolate orange. No. Oh <laughs> you know. I don't know. I would be saying it if I knew. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to just try a bit of this. That is phenomenal. That is so obvious what that is. It's well, frightening. Well, what is it? Oreo, you big idiot. That is delicious. Oh my God, that Okay, all so good. who's the winner so far? The Oreo is the winner. The Oreo is the winner so far. I think we're going to yeah. have to mix them all together, Kat. I, honestly. <gasps> a layer of each. You could. You could. Okay, yeah, here you go. That's unbelievable. And what's the flavour? Red velvet. Yeah. Right, I've sourced it. Well, what's the score? <laughs> That's 9.5. No, red velvet's not my my favourite. Oreo and the lemon drizzle. Oh my God, that was good. I have a question. <laughs> red velvet yeah. is just dyed chocolate though, isn't it? It's, yeah, cocoa powder. It's basically chocolate cake with red colouring in it. Mm. Oh, I don't know what we're going to go for. Okay, Sophie, you, you, listen, this is a huge decision. This is what we're going to remember for the rest of our lives. Well, how many tears are we having? <laughs> well, you tell me. Okay. <laughs> big, go big or go home. Okay, 40. 40. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why not? I want 40 layers. <laughs> One for every child we're going to have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no, no, no. 40 kids. Oh my God. I don't know what your, would happen to your body. Cat is literally like, what have I walked into? Uh, Two absolute yeah. bees just scoffing at the cake. And what flavour is the one that we're going to cut? Wow. I think we're going to go for lemon though, because that's the one you want. And also when you cut it open, it doesn't look red, like blood. Mm, true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Can we go for lemon, but with lemon. the with the um, Philadelphia topping? Yeah. Yeah, you could have that. that. That would match. That would go. Would that go like together? A creamy, lemony icing. We've absolutely nailed it. Yeah. And when then with with little shots around the outside. Yeah. 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 Stunning. Yep. Done. Oh my Done. god, we've nailed yeah. it. Top. And how many tiers would you like? Big. Go big. Six. I'm not going to yeah. be able we'll to have reach. Have a stool. You can get out of my back if you want. Yeah. Cut. I saw the picture of you on the step giving Sophie a kiss. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he hoped no one noticed. I actually didn't notice. I think everyone noticed. You think I'm going to go... I'll pick, piggyback you. You'll piggyback me and I'll then cut the cake. I'll have to pick you up so we can do our kiss. Yeah. Right <laughs> Get a ladder out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we go for four. Four? Just because you're short, don't take it away Five. from me. Five. Meet in the middle. Five is unlucky. Let's go for six. Six. Do <laughs> six. six. You're only getting married once, right? Yeah. And look, honestly... Kat, thank you so much for coming over. You're very Kat, Kat's flown all the way from Marbella to, to let us try these cakes and to be here. So it, we, it's so kind of you and we can't wait to... And for you to be a part of the wedding, it's going to be amazing. So thank Aww. you so much. No, it's thank my you absolute so much, pleasure. Kat, they are delicious and we're Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You're very welcome. Thank you. I love your podcast. I love oh, you too. Thank, thank you so love. much. Congratulations. Oh, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Kat, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Oh. oh my God, that was delicious. You, were, you weren't so bad with the tasting. I think you said Oreo was lemon, which was definitely not right. <laughs> but we, we were getting there. We're definitely not going to have like a the cream, the Philadelphia topping because it's just not going to sit well. It's not going to aesthetically please. It is going to be so good. No, no, we're going to have nice frosty icing. That honey, that Philadelphia icing is. Oh, we'll gobble it out the night before, sister. Oh my god, it's good. I, I, I she, she left some cupcakes in the fridge. Oh, I'm going to eat them. I know. I'm going to eat them. Go for it. I will. Fed into that seat. We have someone who has been pretty prominent in our lives the last eight months to a year supporting us pushing us putting up with us putting up with Sophie <sighs> dealing with no answered emails or texts yeah nagging in a great way yeah we have our wonderful wedding planner who's flown in also from Spain on the podcast right now please welcome to the podcast Lucia oh! thank you for having me <laughs> oh, the this, this is great Lucia. I know is, is it Lucia or Lucia? Because we've been... Well, in Spanish, it would be Lucia, but I know Lucia. it's it's not always easy. Oh, God. To I get keep it. your tongue in between your teeth and say Lucia. I get Lucia. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Lucia. You see, you nailed it. Lucia. Uh, <laughs> no, you said it wrong. You just said Lucia. Me amo Lucia. <laughs> see? Me amo queso. There you First go. lesson. Your, your name is Cheese? Yeah. <laughs> Me amo queso. Me amo Lucia. Uh, te amo queso. I that? love cheese. Love there that. you go. Okay. Oh my God. You say, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, so anyone who is uh, been listening to the podcast and doesn't know, uh, Luthia is our wedding planner. Mm -hmm. You are proud to be. Proud to be. Thank God. You are the magic behind everything. Thank you. You honestly, truly are, and. You know, what you've put up with us and, and everything that you've done and the fact that we're only sort of how many, a couple of weeks away. A couple of weeks away and only been out there twice and never reply to emails or WhatsApps. <laughs> Almost never. <laughs> Sometimes Demi takes over and replies on your behalf. I, I always do. I yes. always Just do. Just to put it out there, I have 180 unread WhatsApps on my phone. Not all for me, though. No, I'm, no, I'm no. being super cautious to send you anything. <laughs> I'm terrible on my phone. <laughs> But you've also been stressed and now you're not stressed, so it's okay. Still not reply. The way that we found you wasn't typical, was it? No. Because how it did it happen again? Well, it was it was totally unexpected because I play paddle, which I know is a, is a sport that you're also getting into, love Jamie, it. I've heard. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and it's becoming huge in Spain and I think also here in London. And I was called for a game at the club where I usually play yeah. and my opponent was... Sophie's dad, who mm. I obviously didn't know at the time. So we introduced ourselves, we played the, the game, and when we finished, we were just chatting, like, what do you do for a living? 
And when I mentioned I was a wedding planner, his eyes went like, oh, really? You know what? My two daughters just got engaged. So that happened when you and your sister, Sophie, just had got engaged a couple of yeah. months ago, I think. And uh, she's considering a few destinations, but, you know, she's close to Marbella because she's been coming here since she was little. And I kind of had a feeling that it could be a great destination for the wedding. So shall we put you both in contact. So I first met with with Patrick and explained how I work and how could I help you. And then he, th- he thought it was a good idea that you came over to Marbella and, yeah. and, and meet you. And I still remember the first thing you told me or you said to oh, me no. when what I met you. What was it? Do you remember? Uh, <laughs> was, I said, God, look how glamorous you look. <laughs> what did no, I say? No, no, no. You Not just, that charming. You yeah. just <laughs> hugged me and said, oh, you smell divine. <laughs> What do I reply to that? Like, you too? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it was quite creepy for me. About it. <laughs> you I think I said, <laughs> you're so glamorous. So well done. I said, you Thank smell you. divine. Is that what divine. I said? Divine. That was the word. <laughs> divine. <laughs> oh, my. How easy are we as um, clients? You Be know, honest. It's, it's easy and tough <laughs> together. It's easy because you're... Just who you are. And I love that. I love working with couples who reflect and project who they really are and don't have to pretend or fake or show Mm. off. And that's exactly what you are. And I enjoy every minute of you replying to any email because it feels as if I was just talking to you face to face because you're so spontaneous and so natural. The tough part is you're busy people and it's impossible (laughs) to get hold of you. It's just... Sometimes at the office, you should hear our conversations like these two, like honestly are making our lives complicated. And at the same time, I do think that some of the decisions you would even be happy if we made it. What I found out about wedding, a wedding is a lot of admin. It is. It, it, to organize a party or create a wedding or whatever you're doing, it is, you have to, I didn't, you have to pick flowers. You have to pick. Which, uh, of course, you need to have a flowers at wedding. What do you think? It's cute. Yeah, and I then the realize. groom emails you at midnight saying, why don't you cut the flowers? <laughs> Remember that, Jamie? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say that? Well, well, Sophie, listen, if you checked your emails, you would have seen it. You are not <laughs> cutting those flowers. I sent your bloody email. golf balls. Okay, okay, Luthia. Okay, let's see. Can you see how I'm trying to, okay, Luthia. We haven't cut the flowers, have we? No. We haven't. We have it. Flowers will be exactly what you decided it will let be. Me, Thank you. Let I me explain myself. Back. Let me explain that. I, uh, we were looking at costs together mm-hmm. and, um, you know, weddings are, 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 not, are not cheap. They're really, <laughs> they're not cheap. And anyway, I was like, well, where do we cut costs? And we went through it, through it. And then I suddenly saw this big bill for flowers, which were... Um, That's spectacular. Okay. It was a big bill. Okay. It was a huge bill. So I emailed uh, Luthia saying... Look, could we cut Was I CC'd in? Sophie was not CC'd in. And Luthia pointed straight away, said, I think it would ruin the aesthetic straight away. And have you emailed me without Sophie CC'd in because you don't want her to know? Girl power, I love you. I try to cancel them. And then you just reply like, okay, let's leave them as they are. No, (laughs) no need. (laughs) I know. So do you hear the fear in my voice? Oh my God. Okay, I get it. Yeah. I would have literally been on the day divorced if yeah. I walked in and there was just <laughs> oh, one tulip. I on wouldn't have let it happen. No way. <laughs> no way. And as you said, I, I, I think I read your vision from the very beginning, yeah. aesthetically speaking. So I, it would have ruined your dream of how it's going to look, not only how it's going to feel, but yeah. flowers are, are part of how the ambiance and the, the vibe is going to be. So if, if Sophie walked in there and didn't find her flowers there... Can we would imagine? all be in trouble. We'd be in huge amounts of trouble. <laughs> yes. There have been a few things I've said and you're just like, nah, no, no, we're not. How many things have you said? Sorry, no, oh, I think... No, I've been pretty alert, good. Alert. You have, you have see, not CCing me and this is outrageous. Honey, it yeah. doesn't matter if I CC and you don't look at it anyway. So well, you're <laughs> sneaky, sneaky McGee, aren't you? Sneaky McGee over here. Um, okay, to, with weddings, what is the most important thing when it comes to a wedding, in your opinion, do you think it is? To me, it's about the experience. It's not about the wow. It's about the experience you give to the couple, to the families and guests, and how memorable it becomes. It needs to be something that stays with you forever. Yeah. It has to be something that you can get back to when things are difficult or when you have a good yeah. a bad moment. You still go back to that wedding day and how, how you looked at each other at that on that day and how guests shared with you. It, it's all about how you make people feel. Yeah. But in order to achieve that, it's all that admin and backstage oh that is not in the photos, but wow. needs to be done. And and it's a lot of passion. I, I always say it's like, I feel like it's it's part of me that is going with the when the wedding is over. You know, like I put Aww. so much of myself in it and so much of trying to make it 
not as spectacular. That's not the word. Making it you, making it yes. the couple. Yeah, making unique. it so that exactly unique. And when guests walk in, they feel like, oh, this is Sophie and Jamie. They don't even need to to start digging into the details because it does feel you, right? But but it was amazing with the with the venues. It was great because you took us different ones, and then you said we have this one, and I think it's going to be right for you guys. You said that, didn't you? I knew, did. yes, and like I was Marmite. a little a little nervous about it because it was not at the heart of the location that you had chosen. But but it's still, I thought like it's a very um, out of the box venue. Either you yeah. love it or hate it, or some people, I think I told you this, some people when I visited would say, oh, this is a venue I would love to uh, to attend a yeah. wedding at, but I wouldn't do my wedding here. However, mm. when it's, it fits right, right for you, it just has everything. It yeah. just has this, it has like a, like a little of mystery. mystery. It's magical, it has isn't magic. it? It's got it's character, has character, a lot of character. A lot of charm. It, it's like a journey for the perm of the event, it really works super well and it's just perfect for you. I think for us, the hardest thing, and I think for you, which you found really hard, is our guest list. Because <laughs> that no, is forever that changing. No, the guest list. It's forever changing. But there's like, how many is it? Like, is it 180? Or is it this? Or like, who is this person? We go, no. we don't know. No, more than the number of people is that, is that a known guest that They're keep coming in. They're imposters. So, exactly. <laughs> yes. So that we are keeping a good eye on it. Honestly, no one... there's going to be a couple people there who will be like, hi, nice to see you. <laughs> mm. Who the fuck? Okay, it won't happen. With it. We'll have a tech at the door. So if anyone hearing is yeah, thinking yeah. about that. Listen, you're not going to get away with yeah, that. Yeah, please be... stop coming to our wedding. But the funniest was when someone someone had RSVP'd who we didn't know and you had sent it around saying, guys, do we know who this is? And then we had another person who did it. We went back and forward with this one person for ages and we finally said, it, it is no one. They're not meant to come. You then emailed them. We found yes. out it was a girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> girlfriend who just... also we've met but, and had dinner with and who is lovely. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are we okay? We emailed us saying you cannot come. Paul Luthier is like, oh, great, well, I look like I don't know my, what I'm doing, but actually it's just us being asked. We Thank had, you for making it public. We no, had dinner with her. <laughs> for cleaning my image here. We think we had dinner with her. Oh my God. And she's lovely. I was so embarrassed. Well, she Your is fault. on the guest list now. She can rest assured she will be welcome. I'm going to fire some questions at you yeah. and you have to answer them quickly. Oh, to see oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And you have to, so it's either or, so you have to pick one or the other. Okay. okay. You have to pick best lighting or best food. Best lighting. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Uh, round tables or long tables? A mix. Oh! oh. If I have to choose one, then... What? If you I have to pick one thing. You have to pick one, then... Nowadays, long. Yeah. Really? Yes. Okay. Uh, great entertainment or great flowers? Great Ooh. entertainment. Great entertainment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Why? It, it, the entertainment is the most important thing, isn't because it? Because that's about feeling that's again. That's party. And of course, flowers are too, and it, it, it cha they change your mood, exactly. But entertainment is definitely memorable in everyone's hearts, minds, mm. eyes. Like you, you do get that with you. If you had a blast, if you had the best time ever, thanks to entertainment, flowers can be left in second place. Yeah. And also the thing which I love that I try to get rid of as well was the ice cream. Mm. <laughs> the ice cream and the churros. The Again, churros. Not the churros. I'm so, my friend Chrissy yeah. is so excited for that churros. If you take that away from her, I will banish you from the wedding itself. <laughs> Jamie, you know these churros are not kidding your churros budget. Churros is sticking. That's my they one. They are staying. <laughs> also the I little, love. the cars, the car, cars are still there, aren't they? The little milk things are still there. Yeah. Yeah, I try to get rid of those. Sorry, one. What did you want to <laughs> Plastic plate with no flowers, no food, nothing. Yeah, listen, what, do you know what I'd have? No flowers, just have Elton John playing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Again, let's just and do still, that. you wouldn't be able to afford it. So, <laughs> what's yeah, the point? Yeah. <laughs> You'd end up getting rid of him and having an impersonator and being like, hey, don't worry, guys, it's him. He's just changed his look a bit. <laughs> okay, Lucia, what about um, oh. disasters? Have you ever had any disasters? So, one disaster, so to say, is one couple, this was years ago, and they were getting married or celebrating mm -hmm. at a private villa. So we had been for, I don't know, almost a year, been visiting the villa and arranging everything. And of course, the villa was booked and paid for. And then 10 days prior, or not even 10, yeah, I think 10, one week prior, I, I knock on the door for a technical visit. Mm. And a guy I don't know opens the door. And he just goes, who are you? And I'm like, 
no, who are you? Like, we have a wedding in 10 days here. Oh, like, no. no way. I just bought this villa and this no. is my house. <laughs> You're joking. I was like, oh my this God. is not happening, right? Like, what do you mean it's not? Like, I just couldn't get it. So, well, obviously we start talking to the agency and well, the people we had booked the villa through. And it turned out, yes, the guy had bought the villa. The guy was not moving out, no matter what. <gasps> And in 10 days, we had to find another venue. Oh my no, God. No, 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 no. Yes. That makes you feel sick. Well, no one's buying the villa. I felt sick at the time, oh, <laughs> I must say. Quivering Not Max. to talk about the couple. How did you phone the couple? What did you say to the wow, couple? Wow, it was, it, that was a tough one. Luthie, have you ever cried at a wedding? Yes. Okay, so if you don't cry at <laughs> That's our a one, sign again? That is a sign. <laughs> yeah. I will cry. I'm sure I will. I, I'm going to be looking at you, making sure. <laughs> I'm going to be looking at Jamie. I'll be just looking for that. Why don't you think I'm going to cry? Because you didn't squeeze one tear out of our English when I was there sobbing away the ice queen. And you were like... Yeah, yeah but, but this is different. I think... It's different. I think because the, the exchange of bows, everything you're doing here in front of many more people also... And the surroundings, the setting, it's just going to make it very only you. It's not another civil wedding, like, you know, it's not yeah. another ceremony happening right after yours or the day after. This is something just for you and it has been planned only for you. So yeah. you're going to feel that and everyone is going to feel that. That's so true. I want to say from from our side, just a huge thank you to you for putting up with us. Thank for, you. For putting on, make it just seamless in every single way. Um, and... Just a shout out to you and and your amazing company, which I'm always bad at pronouncing, but how would we pronounce it? Capriccia. Capriccia. They call me Tia at home. That's where it's coming from. And are we your favorite clients you've ever had? Of course. Who I else could that be? <laughs> I knew it. I absolutely knew it. <laughs> thank you so much for coming thank on the you podcast. Thank you for having me. My yeah. pleasure. We absolutely love We can't wait for the wedding. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> oh, Lisa, that was amazing. Thank you. Did I work? Oh, oh my God, that was so good. <laughs> Sorry, she's just so great. Oh, honey, today's been a bit of a hectic episode. I get it, but it's just all coming together. It's all coming together. Tick by tick, day by day. Note by note. Eye by eye. Day by day. No, let's not now. Three things we pray. <laughs> In the little man's lay. No. <laughs> oh my God. Honestly. Right, we're nearly there. We're really nearly there. We've got the cake. We've got the planner. <laughs> We've got kidding. the seating plan and we are ticking. We haven't done the seating oh, plan. Oh, get over it, we have. No, we haven't. I'm going to have to sit now and do it. You could let me join in, but you won't, control freak. <laughs> not a good... Also, you can't spell I can. Okay, well, then you do it. I have. We can't end this podcast on an argument. Okay. Not... Okay, I love you. I love you. Say it nicely. I did, I love you. I love you so much, my wife. Oh, God, I love you. <laughs> okay, all right, everybody. Listen, we love you guys, as always. Please get ready for uh, next week's episode, which is the last episode <gasps> before the actual wedding. Before I get out of to Spain. It's the last episode before the actual wedding. Holy Moses. And also, before we go, I want to leave a little thing in here. Stay tuned on Mine, Sophie's and the Nilly Weds podcast because we have a little surprise for you. Something that we have been cooking up behind the scenes. Slaving away at, one would say. Slaving away for a long time. All of the ups and downs, the lefts, the rights, the goods and the bads. The highs and lows. The highs and lows. Everything had gone into our wedding planning. We have a surprise for you. For everyone out there who is thinking about it, it's going to be unbelievable. We're going to be launching it just before our wedding. So keep your eyes and ears peeled. Also... For the episode, the final episode before the actual wedding, we have the lie detector back. Can't wait. To find out if you truly, Sophie Lang. To find out if you, it's Jamie Lang, are still honey. watching porn. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Buckle up, sister. <laughs> All right, buckle up, girl. I got my questions ready and roasting to go. <laughs> ready and roasting to go? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. No, we love we you. Haven't, we haven't signed off yet. It's hot something in here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to find out if you actually are happy to be a Ling, happy to be married. Yeah. I am. Okay, okay. that's not convincing at all. So that's also a next episode. So keep your eyes and ears peeled and get ready for next episode, the final episode before the wedding. If you want to get in contact to us, please do remember the email is super simple, contact nillywedspodcast.com or slide into our DMs at nillywedspodcast. We're also on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all those places. If you're getting engaged. We love you. If you are thinking about getting engaged. You rock. If you're getting married. Good luck. If you're divorced. You are rolling in the... River. 
<laughs> no, you're still great, and life's got different turns and paths, and you'll reach your end destination. Stop me now! If you are thinking about proposing, go and do it. And if you just are single, you go sleep around. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to see you next Monday for our final episode before the big wedding day. We love you. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Lovely. Bye, DJs.